Welcome back everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Today we're going to be changing the water impeller on the boat. Um, my main goal is to have this thing out on April the some first first couple of days of April. Uh, I'll give you a sneak peek of the boat. Uh, right now in its current state, uh, it may not look the same when uh, April comes around. Uh, I'm not really doing a whole lot to it, but we're not going to take it out and break it in for the first time for me and for y'all until April. So and I want to make sure I have this in top-notch shape before I do that. I don't want to go out and have any hiccups. I don't go out and sink it. I don't go out and have uh, fuel issues or anything like that. I don't want to have water cooling issues. Uh, number one killer to outboards is cooling. If you're not pumping out enough water out, your they call it a pee hole. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it a pee hole. If you don't have a whole lot of water coming out of your pee hole, then you're going to run into problems later on down the river or lake or whatever because, you know, these outboards, you know, they're, they're water-cooled. And when that water impeller gets wore out, you know, it's just a big chunk of big chunk of rubber. I'll show you all here in a minute. And what happens is, prematurely when you start the engine up, there's no water. And that little second it takes for it to pump water up when you first put it in the water, it, it tiny, tiny, tiny bit erodes the uh, rubber away. Because all it is is rubber. Uh, for people that fish a lot of area with sand and stuff, you may want to change your impeller sooner on your uh, outboard because the sand tends to really do a number on the rubber on the impeller so let me get down to it and i'll show you what outboard i got all righty boys and girls here we are at the outboard just a little single carb two cylinder 35 horsepower outboard chrysler this is a 1973 this is a this is the 357 hd model outboard um it's actually in pretty good shape consideringly uh, a few people noticed that the head was a little bit different color than the rest of the block. They're like, well, it may have got hot. Um, yeah, there's going to be some kind of discoloration on a, what, 40-year-old engine? So, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to happen. Um, the things I'm going to do to this is I'm going to replace the fuel pump. I'm going to rebuild the carburetor. The carburetor definitely needs a good cleaning inside. The uh, I had to figure out why the choke is not working. Uh, it's got an electronic choke on it. Um, if I can't figure out what to do, I'll just hook up a manual choke to it. No big deal. Um, but right now, and it's got a new spark foot. I'm going to do a new, do new hoses throughout and stuff like that as well. Uh, I'll probably take the flywheel off and clean the points. It does have points up underneath there. So, yeah. Uh, points are always fun. Um, but yeah, here is where we're going to be getting into. Now, for this bottom unit here, this lower unit. It's supposed to be these two screws. This is for the cover. We got a linkage here we have to undo. Then on the bottom here, we have two bolts on this side and two bolts on the other side. And then once we get it slid down, get this cover off, get the linkage down, there should be like a little carter pin that holds the linkage in in the lower unit here, and it should just slide right out. Now, if that if it really is that easy, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But um, let me get my tools together, get my water impeller. I left it in the house, and we'll get started on this bad boy. We need to get this bad boy going for the spring because it's going to be a, you know, we're going to be fishing hard out of it. We'll be chasing some flatheads here soon. I'm trying to cheat a little bit and use a drill here and there when I can. Walmart special. These hands are pretty good. Remember to pick them up when I'm done. And that one's loose. Then we've got a few right here to take out. Nut came off. Nut fell off. And I'm not really worried about these nuts because these are replaceable. You find them in any hardware store, so I'm not really too worried about that. All right, now that I've got this all loose here, the linkage here, uh, I did not take it off uh, because a lot of people get away without having to take it off. So what I'm going to do is I've got it loose enough to where when I pull this down, it's going to give me enough slack for the rod to come down, pull the pin out, and take this lower unit off here. Uh, I don't want to take the linkage completely off. I mean, it's no big deal if I do. But, you know, anything to make your job easier, it's best to go easy, you know. So uh, let me get to loosen these, nuts, uh, these bolts up here, and then we'll see if we can't get this undone.
If you can see here, there is a little a itty bitty pin. Y'all see it there? Right there. There's a little pin right there. That's where any of those pliers is going to come into play, and we're going to remove that, and this whole unit is going to slide out now. That's all that's holding it up is a linkage, and as soon as I pull that little pin out, this whole bad boy is coming out. So let me get the needle nose pliers, and we'll get this dropped. All right. Now we've got that off here. I am pouring fuel out everywhere. That's okay. This is during the drain. Now here is our lower unit. It is completely out. Awesome, and it. Awesome. That's gotta. That's good. That's what you want to see. If you can't turn this by hand, you may want to be looking at some new bearings and stuff, and new greasing and everything. Uh, we will be changing this lower unit. Uh, oil grease as well, not grease. Gear oil, sorry, brain fart. We're gonna put some new gear oil in here too as well before we take it out. Uh, it's pretty easy and simple to do. I'll show y'all how to do that too. It takes literally five minutes to do. Uh, put my little cats, did this a while back. No, I think he did a oil change, not a lower unit change. Yeah, he did an oil change, but uh, you're supposed to change this oil out every, you know, some people prefer every year. I'm gonna do mine every year. I'm sorry, I just don't wanna run into problems. This will create less problems. Uh, the prop looks pretty good. It's not chewed up too bad or being uh, banged up or anything. Uh, if it creates a vibration issue, then we'll replace it. Uh, there is upgrades for a bigger prop for this if I want to, but I'm not sure if I will or not. But, uh, yeah, here's our lower unit. And let's get to taking this water pump cover off. This right here is where our impeller, water impeller sits. Right there. Right there. So, uh, yeah, let me get to cleaning this up a little bit, and we'll get down into it. Alrighty, here is our new water impeller. This is the part number here, 47-F400-65-2. This is for Chrysler 35 horsepower outboard. Um, I got this on Amazon. Amazon had this. Uh, I believe it was $14. Uh, make sure I don't have no fuel on my hands. I made sure I cleaned it off best I could, but this is what it looks like. That's all this is. This little rubber piece right here can cause you a lot of a lot of money or it'll cause you to have a really bad day so yeah you see this, this is all rubber I'm really hoping it's the same style as the one that's in it so uh, this is one we're going to replace with this is a new one so let's get down to taking this out and get this bad boy up and going alrighty hopefully you can see that well can't want to step out of the way when I step back sorry but uh, let's get down to taking this out and get my drill uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just take these four bolts out, slide it out, and slide this cover off here. Try not to get in y'all's way so y'all can see this in action. I'm really curious to see how this looks. Well, this is my first time ever doing this, and it's going so far. So far, it's going pretty good. Pull this up. Wow, look at that. Oh my god, this thing's destroyed. Wow, look at that. Let me get y'all better in on this. Look at that. That is gone. There's nothing left of it. What in the world happened to it? This is why I'm doing this exactly just like this. It's why I ain't took it out yet. Oh my god. Let me get it over a shaft here. Now we gotta pull it over this. Make sure it's easy. Don't wanna rip it. Let me get this camera, but oh wow, look, they're all up in there. Oh yeah, I can't see. Hold on, I'll get my phone. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> That's horrible. That's exactly why I'm doing this. Look at that. Wow. This could be the reason why it was having problems getting hot and shutting off on the boy going down the river.
All right, now that I've got the whole shaft out, this part here just literally just slides off, and that's the old water pump right there. That's all there is to it. Uh, this thing is definitely full of gear oil. When I picked it up and took the shaft out, the gear oil started to pour out. It comes out right there. That's where the shaft slides down into it at. Um, yeah, let's uh, get this cleaned up here and get the new one on. Uh, the number one rule you want to do with these is try to figure out which way the old one went. You want all these going in the same way, same pattern. Either way, as long as the skulls are going the same way. Uh, bad thing is with mine is it was so bad gone, um, we have no idea what direction it's going in. So I'm going to clean this plate up here a little bit, clean it up, try to get some of this grime off of it. All right, got the plate cleaned up best I could. This stuff here, it's on the outside. It's not going to matter. This little part right here, right here is where it counts. And just for the sake of it, I'll clean the back of it too. Just wiped it down really good. Um, yeah, let's put this back on and get the shaft back in and try to get this thing mounted back up. Oh, and don't forget to clean, don't forget to clean your impeller housing as well. You know, that's that's really important too. Don't forget to clean that out. Uh, I'll clean it out, wipe it down. It looks pretty shiny. Uh, I don't see nothing else in it that could cause problems for it. So we're just going to go with it. We're going to put it in there, make sure all the uh, fins are going the same direction, and just send it. All right, now that we've got this installed here in the housing, you want to make sure all your fans are turning in the same direction. Now, it is a little difficult to get these all going in the same direction, especially since every time you push down on it. So you don't want, you don't want no, you want it all same direction here. You want them all turning in the same direction. You don't want none of them any different than the other. Just like that, that'll be fine. Now, I did put a little bit of uh, bearing grease in here just for initial startup. But after a one trip of being out maybe five, ten minutes in the water, it'll wash it out. It's it, it's it's not a heavy duty grease at all. Um, but yeah, that's what I did with this to try to help keep down on the premature what started up without having water in it. You know, when you first initially started up, when you first back it into the water, I want to make sure I prevent that. But yeah, that propeller was just shot. That's it just amazes me. So glad I went with this. This probably just say it may have saved the motor. Or, you know, we've did a compression test, and it does really good on compression, so, yeah, this was a good idea. I mean, 15 bucks probably just saved me three or $4,000 for an outboard. You know, outboards are not cheap. A brand new 35 horsepower, you're looking at $10,000 almost, or more. Depending on, you know, you can find them used sometimes for 1500 to 2000 but if something happens to this one, I'm going to fully rebuild it, tear it completely down, rebuild it, because I really like having the old school stuff, and, you know, I am... I do love my, I do like my Chrysler products, you know, like vehicles and trucks, the older 80s and 90s, 70s and 60s, but, you know, this newer stuff, I don't really, it's not really Chrysler, so. But, uh, yeah, let me get this mounted back up in here into the lower unit, and we'll get this bad boy slapped back together. There we go. Well, trying to tighten it up, but once to move. <laughs> All right, we get the lower unit back on now. Everything spins freely. Uh, I've got one boat in it for now, just to get it holding up. I've got the linkage hooked back up. I put the pin back in, the little quarter pin. Um, yeah, so let's get down to tightening everything back up here, and uh, we're ready to roll. Uh, I'm going to keep its casing off for now until the next video. Next video, we're going to start this bad boy up. And uh, give her a test, see how that new water impeller does, and yeah. So uh, I actually bought a, uh, they call it a PVC flush flusher, so I figured that'd be a better idea than a trash can like I tried before, but it didn't pump no water then, and this, this was underwater. That water was all the way up to here, and it was not pumping no water, so I kind of knew it was bad, um, you know. So yeah, let's get this button back up here, and we'll be done for the day. <laughs> All right, boys and girls. That's my uh, water propeller how-to. Uh, well, it's not really a how-to. It's more of a maybe DIY. It's, it's an in-between. 
Um, I know I didn't get down into true, true details of it, but if you follow how I did that, anyone can do that. It's, it's really that simple. Literally four bolts, the linkage, the little quarter pan, the pin, the whole unit comes down on the Chrysler. Um, and then once you get it out, those four little screws, uh, flathead screws that hold the uh, water impeller casing down. Um, the outer casing, you know, like it's like a little water pump pretty much casing is what it is. Um, that's really about it. That's all there is to it. So, um, yeah, we got a new water impeller in. Uh, next, we're going to do a, I'm not sure if we're going to do a carb rebuild. I may do a carb rebuild or just take it out and do a good thorough cleaning on it. Um, you know, give it a good, give it a good carburetor cleaner bath. You know, scrub it out, get some uh, pipe cleaners to run through it, through all the jets where the little jetting hoe is and everything. Uh, clean the bow. Um, the only thing else I know I'm going to do to this is change the lower unit gear oil. It did have clean gear oil in it, so that's a really good sign. Uh, did not like seeing the uh, water impeller just demolished, though. I mean, it was completely demolished. So, um, but um, yeah, that's going to be it for today, and I'll catch you on this one. Bye, y'all.